All right, perfect. All right, so just want to give an uh, introduction to myself. Um, if you don't know who I am, my name is Bianca Goolsby, and my role is to help children be safe online and to educate parents on the issues and the dangers that they might experience online and to have those courageous conversations to create safe social spaces. So as guardians and educators, our foremost concern is child safety. In the digital era, location tracking apps have emerged as prevalent tools to monitor children's locations. So we're going to examine some of the advantages and disadvantages to these apps and explore how to use them effectively. At the end of this presentation, we'll have a question and answer session so that you're able to ask any questions. Also, I have links and resources that you can scan on your phone so that you are able to see the different popular apps that we're talking about today. So what are location tracking apps? So these apps work on GPS technology and they track the location of a person in real time. These apps work on smartphones, tablets, even smart watches. These apps often are used by parents to track their children's whereabouts. And some apps actually are designed just for children's safety, while others are just in more general use so that you can protect your loved ones. These apps typically require both the child and the parent to have the app installed in order for the phones to work. And once installed, the parents can view their child's location through the app, which can provide peace of mind and ensure that their child is safe and secure. So there are benefits to location tracking apps. So peace of mind. It gives parents reassurance. And Barb was sharing earlier about how sometimes her son might lose their, their keys or they might be lost somewhere. And it's great to be able to tap in to see, well, where is my child? Where are they? Um, it gives you that access to see. Also, it gives you real-time updates. So you're able to see. And it's helpful, especially if it's in an emergency. There are news articles all over where children end up, you know, taking cars, leaving or um, traveling and they get lost or they're in a situation that is dangerous for them. And to be able to have an app to know where their child is, is very helpful. Geofencing is really cool. And I'll explain what that is. Geofencing actually will alert you if a child is in a predetermined area. So I'll give you an example. Uh, my family, we use Life360. So anytime that one of the family members leaves the home, there is an alert that says this person has left the home. And so you can set it to where if they leave school, you'll get notified when they leave school. If they leave the house, you'll get notified when they leave the house. Or maybe you wanna set it to their friend's house. Um, you can set it to where any time that they leave a certain location, you're notified. Also, it gives you that security to know that if your child is lost or in extreme cases where they've been taken against their will, you have some type of receipt to show where your child was with a timestamp. Now, with those benefits, we do have risks. And so the first is privacy concern. There are some children that feel that if their parents are seeing their, lo seeing their location, that their rights are being violated. And so this is where we have to have those courageous conversations to say that this is not me trying to invade your privacy. This is so that I can determine to just make sure that you're safe. And that is just a conversation that needs to be had at home making sure that everyone is on the same page as the attention of why this app is downloaded. It can also be inaccurate, meaning that sometimes it might not show the actual location. I'm not sure how familiar folks are, but if you're, say, in an apartment building, for example, it's not going to tell you the exact apartment number that you're in. So it's not going to be fine-tuned to tell you exactly, but it kind of gives you a, a general overview of where um, your, your child is. 
and and these apps also cause battery drain. So the more apps that you have running on your phone at a given time, it does deplete the battery. It does um, take away the battery life. So it is something that you have to be mindful of. I would also recommend that your child has a battery pack or something to where they can always keep their phone charged. If their phone dies, they have a backup to where they can plug in and, and charge their device. Um, Bianca, um, if you teach the children how to close the apps, um, doesn't that um, provide a little bit more longevity to the battery? So yes, the more apps that you have running at a given time, it does take the battery. So if you go in and you close those windows that are not in use, it will help your battery life. Absolutely. Great question. So the best practices on using these tracking apps is to foster a conversation with your child as to why this app is being downloaded, setting clear boundaries so that everyone is transparent about using the location, that you are not obsessively checking the location, but you're using it in conjunction with other safety measures. Also, choosing a reputable app because there are different apps in the app store that say that they are providing tracking, but they're not an app that I would trust or recommend because sometimes there's apps in the app store that contains malware or they're not really supported. So your information can get compromised. So it's really important that you choose a reputable app, which is what we're going to move into because I actually have did a review of the most popular tracking apps and I want to give you an overview of their features and I have um, their QR codes available so you can actually scan it on your phone and look at it yourself so you can see it directly from the source. So these are the four popular tracking apps. We have Life360, we have Google Family Link, we have Find My App, which is primarily and strictly used on Apple devices. And then we have Find My Kids. So these are the four most popular ones. Of course, there are ones that are available through your carrier. So maybe you have Verizon or T-Mobile. They have their own family tracking within the service provider. There are also other apps out there. So it just depends on what feels more comfortable for you, how the user interface is, and whether it's free or not. The options that I provided, most of them are free. There are some um, subscriptions that you can purchase. So for example, Life360, you can actually upgrade the features with Life360 and pay a subscription for, as well as Find My Kids. Google Family Link and Find My App are free but they are exclusive to devices. So Google Family Link is primarily used on Android devices, although it does have an iOS app that you can download. And Find My App is just exclusively, exclusively on Apple devices. So Live360, I've posted a screenshot and a QR code for you to scan. You can visit Life 360 by visiting check the cell phone slash life 360 life 360. So it's a location tracking app that offers a variety of features for families. This app allows parents to view real time location of family members and a private map and will get alerts when um, folks leave specific locations such as home and school. Also, it has a feature where when you are um, using this app and you're in the car, it will actually tell you an average of how many miles per hour you're going. So this is also great. So if you're checking your phone and you're checking this app and you want to see, you know, your child is driving and you see on the app that they're on the road and you see that they're driving 80 miles uh, an hour, then you know, hey, this might be an issue here. Um, why are they speeding? And you have a, a, a receipt, if you will, on that type of activity. It can also monitor ex excessive acceleration, heart breaking, and it can also send alerts if it detects car accidents too. 
So this is a really, really powerful app. Over 3 million downloads that can be used on Android and iPhones. I personally recommend Life360 for folks to use because it is backed up and insured. It has a lot of support and it has a lot of free features that you're able to set up and start today, regardless if you have an Android or regardless if you have an iPhone. Google Family Link is a service strictly and linked to Google. Google has an app for the Android and iPhone, iOS, that allow parents to monitor and manage their child's device usage. So you're able to set digital ground rules for children. You can view activity reports and you can manage screen time within the app. Um, some of the features that Google Family Link includes is app management. So you can approve or block apps mm -hmm. that are being downloaded from the Google Play Store. Now, I want to note that this is only for the Google Play Store, that if you want to limit apps from the Apple App Store, that is an entirely different process that you have to follow. But this is why it's important that you are aware of these different solutions because it can get complicated because different apps offer different things. So with Google Family Link, you have screen time management to where you can set alerts for bedtime. You can set alerts for how long that they're on their screen. So maybe bedtime is 10 o'clock and no phone should be used after 10 o'clock. Well, with Google Family Link, you can actually set that up. And you can set up that screen time management to where you can control how long your child is on a device. Also, you have activity reports. So you can actually see on a weekly or a monthly basis how much time is being spent on apps, games, and other activities. This is really empowering because this is a great way as a family to do a digital audit to see how long are you spending time on these devices? What does this look like? Um, are you spending more time on these devices versus doing homework or doing things that can help improve your life? What does that look like? So this is a great way to get that data, to get that information. It also allows you to lock and unlock the device. So maybe you want to lock the device during dinner. You have a rule that says we don't have phones during dinner. Well, you can lock the device to where during dinner time they won't have access to the phone to use it. So that's Google Family Link, and you can go to checkthecellphone.com slash Google Family, or you can scan the QR code, and it will take you right to Google so that you can learn more about the features and set it up if you're interested. So this is good, too, for children, uh, families who have kids in school who are worried about, you know, they know that their child goes to a class between, I'm just going to throw it out there, 9 and 9.45. And they know that their child should not be on their phone at that time. So is that something that this app will do as well? Absolutely. Yes. This app will do it, particularly for Android phones. There is a way in iPhone that you can set those screen time settings within the settings within Apple. So maybe that is another conversation that we can have or another session on showing how to actually set that up step by step because there is a process. It is documented on their website, but sometimes people just want to see it and see how to implement it. So maybe next month, that's one of the things that we do is to show how to limit certain um, apps during certain times and showing what that would look like on an Android device and what that would look like on a Google device because they're two totally different entities in the way that it has to be done. That's awesome. I, you know, I think um, the parents would really, especially those um, right now here, you, you chime in if you want, um, but I feel that it would be a helpful session to have. Absolutely. And welcome to the um, new people that um, have She froze up. Welcome, welcome. Um, Popped into the meeting. Yeah. I'm glad that you are here. So, no, you just unfroze. Okay, perfect. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so find my app. This is exclusively for iPhone users. 
Okay, this is the Find My app to where you're able to find the location of your device and you can also share your location with other Apple users. Most of the time, this app is used to locate lost devices. So as an educator, students would leave their cell phones all the time. So my job sometimes was to go on Find My, have them sign in and ping their phone to see where it is or lock the phone to make sure no one took it and to alter settings and, and try to steal it. That happens often. So it's really important that you have, if you have an iPhone device particularly, that you have Find My app set up because that is going to help safeguard your phone, your device, and make sure that it doesn't get stolen or um, captured in the wrong hand. And it will also allow you to um, get location updates when people are leaving certain locations, the geofencing that I was sharing earlier. But the difference here is this is exclusively on the Apple device. You would set this up through Apple. And what I have shared, the QR code, if you scan it, it will take you to the website that is listed on the screen, which is directly from Apple on how to set up family sharing. Setting up family sharing is what needs to happen if your whole family has an iPhone device. And that is not just an iPhone, but a tablet, a smartwatch, everything, okay? You need to make sure that you have this installed because if something happens to your child's device, you don't have much recourse if this is not set up. Okay, and then the last app that's available is Find My Kids. And so this is a tracking app that is designed just for parents to keep their eyes on their children. This is available for iOS, Apple, or Android, and it offers a range of features. So there are, there are free features that are included with Find My Kids, and there are also some paid features, such as an SOS button. It allows um, a child to hit a button and it will send an SOS alert right to the parent. Or it will have a um, panic mode where it would activate if the child's in danger. It also has um, different features where it can give you unlimited history to where you can keep a log of where have they been, where they've been traveling to. And so it's a really good tool to use. A lot of folks have been talking about this app in particular. But out of all of these four apps that I've mentioned, I have to say that Life360 gives the best protection. It allows more um, diversity in devices. So maybe you have one child that has an Android device. You might have an iPhone and another child might have an iPhone. Well, all of y'all are connected as a family, regardless of what device that child has versus having it separate. So. All in all, to protect our children, we have to check the cell phone. We have to be aware of the risks. We have to know what's happening, and we have to understand that our children deserve the best, and we have to make sure that they are in the best hands and the best care. And by tracking the devices, by tracking their location, and making sure that they are where they need to be is a great start. Knowing where your children are is a great start and these apps will help. So I will open the floor for questions of different apps that you might have or different experiences you may have. Um, the floor is yours. I, I would love to hear your feedback, thoughts, and overall opinions on this subject matter. Um, Bianca, I have a question. Um, does it work opposite? So say a kid is stranded at school, they miss the bus and they're trying to figure out if a family member can pick them up um, and get a location. Would it be possible for the kids also to track the adult's location? Yes, okay. that is correct. Okay, awesome. Yes. I'll give you an example for that. So my sister, she has access to my parents' location. So when I was in Tallahassee, she just had prom. She literally knew when my dad was pulling up into the house because she got a notification that dad is home because of Life360. So it does allow that 
that two-way communication of knowing where people are? Great question. So if I could say this, I'm looking at this through the eyes of our students, but parents who play a dual role in their adult parents and their children. So, you know, we have um, um, patients, uh, you know, where in my and where I work um, that are in geriatrics. And this is perfect because, you know, if you could track where they are, you know, those um, silver alerts won't have to go up. But, you know, our, a lot of our parents who are now in the aging process, um, we have to understand that we um, are able to track that. So it's, it's, it works for both of the um, most vulnerable populations is our children and our, um, and our elderly. But um, I think this is, it's just wonderful, you know, um, especially for me when my children, you know, I'm out in, you know, in the community till late at night sometimes and that my children know where I am if anything happens. You know, I'm just looking at it as a positive for everyone in the family, you know, but that's my opinion. I, I just think these are great apps. I also um, wanted to jump in, good evening, everyone. Um, I and my family use Life360, and to your point of the two-way ability to be able to track, it also promotes integrity within the family. Right. So if the parents are, you know, saying I'm at work, then if I look to see, then you should be at work because that, <laughs> that's what you said. Right. So it eradicates that culture of do what I say, not what I do. Right. Which is a very toxic type of cycle that many of our families have existed in in the past. So that's also a thing is now we're having conversation about family integrity and what that means for us to do the right thing, even when no one is watching and all the things that we say to our kids. But we also have to model that as adults. The other thing that I wanted to say was I live abroad, so I live in South America. Um, I know that the people that are in my circle on Life360 know that I am okay because they have the ability to tap into the app. Um, there was a point made earlier about excessively looking, right? So that's another conversation of, you know, yes, I went to the grocery store today. My goodness, you all don't have to like say anything about that. But that is a conversation then that can be built about why do we use this? What is the purpose of us utilizing this tool? And how can you abuse things that are meant for good? Right. So um, I just wanted to kind of talk that in as someone who uses Life360 all the time. Um, it really is an amazing app. Yes. Thank you for that. And Life360. Uh, they're not paying me to promote this by any means. I don't have an affiliate code or anything like that, but it's one of the most downloaded apps for a reason. It works. It's effective. And so I am recommending all parents and caregivers that if they don't have a platform already set in place with their carrier or another app, that Life360 is going to be an easy way to get started, to get set up without a lot of roadblocks and obstacles. What is the cost of Life360 if you wanted to maximize the, the, the app? Great question. So they have different um, payment options, and I can actually pull it up for you so that you can actually um, see it. So one second. Because my mother, she's in that aging process, Karen, 85, still driving. And I live an hour away from her and, you know, I, it's like the white knuckles go into, into play when I know she's going out. Oh, okay. So there are three plans. So you, like I said, you can get started for free and a lot of the location tracking features that you would need are free. But they do have a gold and a platinum um, option that's available. And it just includes additional um, location history. It also, um, they have like a, a chart on what it includes or not. So identity theft protection, credit monitoring, um, medical assistance, travel support. Um, so that is kind of the breakdown of the differences between the different plans that they have with Life360. But if you're just trying to, um, you know, find where your where your mother is and to make sure that you have crash detection on it that's free 
right? You can be able to, so as long as she has it on her device and you have it on your device and y'all are talking to each other, it will work and it would be fine. Um, because how, because how the phone starts to go in from some so, so Bianca, um, to Barb's point, the crash detection, I know, let me say this, um, a lot of the elderly folks that I have in my geriatrics population, they'll go out, have an accident and come home and their family is not, none aware of what happened no. because it's not on purpose. You know, they have, you know, they, they're slowly um, in the dementing process. And so, you know, um, I, I am trained as a provider that when I walk up to their home, I look at the car. I always expect the car to see if maybe possibly they've had an accident. But this also um, can help you as far as, you know, knowing, okay, they had an accident. Let me go out there and make sure they're okay. Or, you know, um, I think this, this is, or for one of our kids, you know, our kids like to drive fast you know, break rules, you know, as they're driving, um, you know, and for me, when they get home and say, no, you know, nothing happened when you, when you said you could check and see he's been driving 80 miles an hour, you know, that mm -hmm. so, you know, to, to be able to help the child, um, like, um, it was mentioned, like, um, Kimberlyn mentioned to be honest, you know, that honest, um, piece there, that they were trying to teach our children. So I, I think this is great, but I don't want to keep stealing the, the conversation. Everybody else could join in. Are there any additional questions? There are some new people that came in. There will be a replay and an email blast that will be sent out with the recording of this. So if you missed the presentation, um, you'll still have access to it. But if there's any additional questions, I'm here to answer them. I wanted to share an experience. Um, I actually, when when Karen, you mentioned about the silver alerts, I actually, unfortunately, was watching the news one night and saw my former hairdresser, and she, there was a silver alert put out on her, and I had no idea she was in the beginning stages of dementia, and you know, it, it like I'm worried more about my son and tracking, but now I'm thinking, you know, like you said, this, if you have that conversation, this protects every one of the family members. Um, and then that adds a little more like, oh, it's not just mom or, or caregiver spying on, you know, the teenagers. And then, you know, if they're skipping school as well. <laughs> well, you know what, also, um, um, it can make children responsible for grandparents as well, you know, because sometimes, you know, as adults, we have to adult um, in life and we have meetings that we're sitting in. We can't look at our phones, but maybe, you know, if something happens to grandma or grandpa, the child could, you know, um, get gets that detection, you know, and, and let's uh, alerts us. But, you know, I just think that this this app makes an amazing family, like uh, somebody mentioned about communication and transparency. Um, and I know that, you know, you're, you're thinking about the fact of child's privacy, but when you're protecting your child, that privacy, I feel, um, you know, you're not invading their space. You're not going through their phone. You're not going, you're just seeing where they are. And um, like Kimberlyn mentioned, that there is a conversation, a transparent conversation about safety and the well being of children. Um, you know, when it comes to using this app, not so much, hey, we're going to spy on you to see what you're doing, but we're going to protect you and make sure you're okay. Yes. And, and the app is not foolproof. So there are children that will turn off their phone so that the GPS signal no longer works. And then on the app, it'll show that the phone is off. So if they don't want to be found, there are ways to disable the app. If you don't have it to where they can't uninstall apps, they can uninstall Life360 and then install it back 
So it's important to just have a conversation as to why the app is here, why everyone is participating in the process to make that conversation a courageous conversation so it doesn't feel intrusive, that it feels that this is a level of security and a level of safety, especially in the climate and culture that we're in now. Well, you know, and I I'm I'm sorry. Sorry. I thought too, I recently watched um, that movie, The Girl in Room 13, which um, talks about the um, human trafficking. And what a wonderful way too. I mean, that mother was frantically looking for her daughter. And I learned something that I didn't know that off of the interstate, their chosen places to take girls is on these little motels and hotels. And it I mean, I'm just making all of these connections now saying, you know, it, it just really is everybody's safety in this given society that is, you know, unfortunately, horrific things are happening on a daily basis. Um, so I, I really appreciate um, the information, Bianca, and, and it's really important for anyone. You know, um, what I was going to say, Barb, is, you know, when we're, God forbid, just God forbid something happened in our schools. Um, but we see that happening uh, throughout the nation, that parents go to the school trying to find their children and they don't know where their children are. Okay. You know, um, and I'm thinking this, this, you know, those conversations that we have with our kids regarding, you know, their safety and and security and what could possibly happen. Um you know, although it's almost like, you know, throwing sand in the air and figuring out where it's going to land. But it's um, a very crucial conversation today to have. And I'm going to say this, especially today, that here in Florida, we have a bill that's been signed for, um, you know, the concealed carry, um, everybody, you know, <laughs> carry a gun. It don't matter, you know, but at least we're, we'll know where our children are and they're safe in situations that are happening now that have never happened before. Right. And if I can just add on to that, um, Karen, as an uh, master facilitator in social emotional competencies, which I paused of how I wanted to say it because I know the, the culture of Florida right now. Um, but just thinking about, um, to your point of the courageous conversations, the level of self-awareness and self-management that we'll be able to build, the level of social awareness of, it's not just me out here in this world. I also have a family that I care about. So I want to make sure that we're all okay. I'm going to be a team member in this because we're a family, right? Um, the level of social emotional competencies that we can foster with our children as we all grow in these areas is astronomical just by something of saying, hey, I think that we should all keep up with each other, right? It's defining. And it's also us questioning our intentions behind why we're getting it. Right, because if there's something more going on, then maybe there are some additional conversations that we're needing to have. So now we're encouraging that communication. So I'm just kind of over here making so many connections, just as Barb was saying earlier, about all of the ways that a small tool like this can really help to enhance our families. Yeah, this has just been a great, Great conversation, I gotta say. But one person I want to ask is Ashley. I don't know if she's on um, because she has a smaller child, and I don't know if he has a phone or not. How do you handle the phone with your with your little guy there? I don't know if you saw the chat, but um, I was telling you in my perspective with all of this. He's had a, a device since he was two, and um, he currently has a phone. First, he had the Timex watch where it still pretty much did the same things, but it wasn't a phone. It was just a watch on his arm. Now he has a phone um, and he's first grade. This weekend I was in Orlando and he had not been without mommy in a long time. And he kept checking the app. Mommy, you're still in Orlando. Mommy, you're over here. Mommy, you're over there. Well, when are you coming back home, mommy? And he finally <laughs> called because my grandmother had him while I was away. 
And he said, 911, mommy, I get a text message. I'm in a workshop and I run out thinking it's an emergency. I'm like, what's the emergency, Tristan? Granny said, don't call you anymore. It was an emergency. Granny said, don't call. I said, well, Tristan, I think this one, you need to listen to granny. Don't call mommy yet. I'll call you back. So it can be overwhelming for kids, especially when they're very close to their parents and they're away. They're constantly checking the app, trying to see when is mommy coming home? When is mommy coming home? But we had those conversations because he has to go away to St. Louis, Missouri for eight weeks and he's with dad. So then I'm the one who's checking the app, seeing where he is in Missouri because I'm missing him. So again, it, it can be intrusive, but you have those conversations where you both understand your feelings when you're in the other person's shoes. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm noticing that children, I think my kids got their first phone when they were like 10, uh, 12, 10 and eight. Um, and that's because, you know, they were with their dad, it was a, a divorced household, and that way they could get in touch with me. But now children are getting their phones even younger and younger. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, um, for us to protect those, those babies, you know, especially if they go to school and somebody says, hey, let me see your phone and show you something. And, you know, we need to, as parents, be very aware of what's really happening um, through the cyber um, um, community and also um, with our own children. Absolutely, to your point, um, my family was totally against the phone. They, you know, they were okay with the watch, but when I said I was gonna give him a phone in first grade, I didn't get a phone, my personal, you know, experience until I was in high school. Um, and it was a little Nokia phone where it had no kind of smart features whatsoever. And now my child has this whole, you know, smartphone where he can video chat and all these things and download at the, you know, push of a button. It really is a mind shift, but I just think personally being a former Hillsborough County educator, I have to know where my child is. I have to be able to immediately contact them. And being that he goes out of state for the summer, I have to have several, like all of his electronic devices have some kind of location, something on them. So if it's in his book bag, he has something, a, a air tag. If it's just his tablet, it has the location setting to where whatever he's on, I can know how much he's using it, what he's on, what he's doing with it, so that I'm always in the know. Especially for those babies that, you know, are away from uh, mom and dad, you know, for long periods of time. I think that is great. You know, um, Bianca, um, you know, I love the education that you're giving us because, you know, it, it not only um, helps us become more aware of what is happening and what we need to do, but also a conversation. It's creating a conversation um, with the parents, um, understanding what they need to do to safeguard their, their children, especially because their children are being um, introduced to you know, more electronics, more gadgets. I, you know, um, I remember I was the remote control for my, for, you know, for my mom whenever she needed to change the channel. And now the kids know how to even do it from the phone. You know, it's just just things that, you know, we have to change with 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 life and how ad uh, we adapt to things. But in the safety, in ensuring the safety of our family, always. Yes, indeed. Um, there is a phone option that is available since we were talking about it that I do want to share. Um, it's called Gab Wireless, and it is a phone that actually does not allow access to any app store. So it doesn't have any internet, no social media. It allows the child to text, communicate, they're able to take photos. It looks like a smartphone. So it is not something that they would be bullied by, by having it, but they won't have Instagram. They won't have Snapchat. They won't have TikTok and won't have access to some of those apps out here. So they do have different phones that are available. They also have watches that um, they have and that's that. So it's called Gab Wireless. You can go to Gab G A B B dot com. And this is their their solution to not having the app store and having that option of having the internet on those devices, but still being able to have that communication and to to be in touch with the child. I see your hand is up, Miss Cobb. Um 
good evening, everyone, I should say. <laughs> so the phone that you're referencing, um, a student, I want to say in first quarter, they're no longer there at the school, had that actual device. And it was interesting to see um, the other students like ask to either use their phone or ask to play things on their phone at the end of the day when it's time for dismissal. But they were puzzled as to why it was not on the phone. So, it, you know, later on, I was like, why your phone not working? And they explained to me, you know, what type of phone it was. It was just used for communication with the parents. But I will say this. If we don't do something about these phones, whether it be safety as it relates to parent communication, the app tags or whatever it may be, we are losing a generation of children. And it is because the mindsets are not developed enough to handle the social connections <laughs> that have been made, trying to be made or whatever it is. But I will leave that at that. But I did have an experience with having a student with that phone. And it was interesting because the students just couldn't understand like, they were asking where the apps hidden or you know so on and so forth and it was like i was confused too but then they explained to me that type of phone it was it was interesting and you're right you cannot tell because the phone is very current and up to date yes yes um and and just on the legislative side on trying to combat this there is a bill that um, is filed and is getting ready to head to the governor's office. Um, my wife and I actually worked on this bill. It is House Bill 591. It is the Social Media Protection for Minors. This bill is to hold big tech accountable for having um, content moderation policies so that children do not have access to things that they should not have access to. And so this is something where we are wanting the big tech to have compliance statements to log and register and not allow children under the age of 13 to participate on these platforms. And we see children that are seven and eight years old that have TikTok accounts. And so that is a violation of the terms of service. And so that is something that needs to be addressed. So as parents and caregivers and guardians, we have to do everything that we can to protect our children. And that's starting with checking the cell phones and having those courageous conversations at home with what's appropriate, what's not appropriate, and what are those expectations and setting those boundaries accordingly. Thank you. And, um, you know, our site, so we're going to talk about our next meeting because we have like eight minutes to go. So our next meeting is going to be, let me see my calendar. And we June are 5th. at June 5th. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see it. June 5th. And um, again, at 630. And, you know, um, if you guys could get more parents, I'm going to talk about this at the school board meeting, um, but get more folks to engage with us, um, you know, as far as these um, apps and these phones are concerned. I know sometimes the teachers feel as if um, they have no control because, you know, the children get on their phones anyway and do all this. And maybe possibly with some of this um, education, you know, our parents will start, you know, moving in a direction to allow the children, excuse me, this little guy is wanting to see who you guys are doing. <laughs> um, oh, I know he, um, he's a therapy dog. So when he hears me talking, he thinks it's, it's uh, time for therapy. But um, when, um, when our children finally start learning how to use their phones appropriately, I think it's going to be for the good. But right now it's just, you know, kind of mayhem with our phones. And that's one of the reasons why um, Bianca and I started this cyber task force is to get the parents a little bit more connected with how to say, um, you know, keep their children safe. Bianca, take it away. Well, that's all that I have. I greatly appreciate everyone joining. We had more people join this meeting than last meeting. So that's growth and progress. And I'm excited to take the recording posted up on socials and the email list. So for the folks that were unable to join us live, they'll be able to have access to this information. But I just want to close out by saying thank you, school board member Karen Perez, for allowing this um, to take place. And that is a great question, Kimberlyn. Do we know what the topic is next month? 
So you mentioned, uh, Bianca, about showing how to download a couple of these and, you know, what, what, um, and putting them into the phone. I know I'm interested in um, having somebody help me download some of this stuff. So, you know, what do you think? So I think that's a great idea. I think for next week or next month would be us actually looking at an Android device, an actual iPhone device, and just going over the settings on the actual phone so that they can look at screen time, they can lock apps, and it's going to be different for different devices. So I can um, have it set up to where I can show my phone in real time and go through those steps so that parents can see the different ways on how they can secure those devices. So yes, that is on the agenda for June the 5th. Thank you, thank you so much. And you know, if, if you know any parents who might benefit from this, you know, um, conversation, you know, ask them to join or send a link to um, Bianca. So she when she sends out the link, um, you know, the parents will have it. And for those of you that don't know how to get access to it, I'm going to share my um, screen with you so that you can see it. So you're going to go to checkthecellphone.com is the place that we um, have our previous content that we've discussed that you can view, but also it allow you to subscribe to our mailing list. You can go right here and subscribe. All you have to do is put your first name and your email address. Also, if you click on Cyber Task Force, I'm going to update this to where it gives the next meeting date, but you can also enter your email address here to get information as well. Uh, Bianca, I had a quick question before we finish up. You know, I, I have a lot of friends <laughs> teaching also, and their major complaint is phones. But um, with Canvas and families always checking uh, their child's grades, is there a flyer um, that you could, that you already have made probably that I could share with um, friends at other schools, uh, especially in the high schools? Um, where they could actually post it as an announcement on the Canvas pages for families. Absolutely. And I appreciate that. And I will intentionally make sure you get that flyer. Awesome. And Ashley, can you get it? Oh, you're on the CDC, right? Um, we, we could get, we could get it to Ashley too, um, you know, to, to send it off. But I'll also put it in Peach Jar. But a lot of parents really don't check that. They mostly check Canvas. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be really honest with you. I think putting it in Peach Jar really, it's, it's a hit or miss there. And Cobb, did you still people? have your hand up? No, I don't know. Oh, okay. <laughs> can, can it be posted on the district's Facebook page? I can. I can have um, uh, Tanya put it on the district. Space. And, and, and there's or, always Twitter going out from Hillsborough yeah. County. That That's definitely yeah. would be a perfect um, platform. Yeah, I'll, I'll ask uh, Tanya, our communications person, um, to do that for me. So. Well, I thank y'all for this opportunity. You guys have an amazing night. We will see you on June the 5th, where we're going to be talking about these different settings on the Android and the Apple devices. And I'm excited for the people that you invite in this space. And I look forward to the conversation next month. Excellent. Thank, thank you, Bianca. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night.